Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope you're all having a great day. So I'm not going to hold you up with a bunch of jibber jabber today. So today's video took place near Keno, Oregon. And I will be honest, it had me a little bit scared, that's for sure. Alright then, without further ado, let's get to the encounter. Dear Cryptids Canada, I just want to say I love to listen to your channel. My name is Alyssa, and I have to say I wonder if it's possible, if there could be different types of Sasquatch or Bigfoot species. What I mean by this is, how can you get some Bigfoot that are so kind to humans, they protect them, they talk with them, and then you get some like the one that I encountered. I did nothing wrong, I don't believe but I do think it really would have hurt me if it caught me. I wonder how some people like Miss Julie, the lady that had the 50 years with Bigfoot experiences, she was so close to Mama and Loner. I just can't figure out what I did wrong. I was just a child at the time, 13 years old. I think I was a little irritated, but I'm getting off track. So I'll start right where it began. As I said, I was 13 years old and I grew up in Sacramento with my mom and dad. But then my dad just up and left us. Mom was working, but she was struggling to pay the bills. So luckily the house was in her name and we decided to sell it and move. But somehow dad found out and decided to go after her for half. So because of the situation with my dad leaving and taking half the money, there was just no way that we could afford the kind of house that we really wanted. So we ended up looking at a really nice little prefab home on a little piece of land surrounded by woods. There was a beautiful deck on the back of the house and it seemed so peaceful and perfect for us. So we decided that was the house for us and we bought it. So a couple of weeks after we moved in, my aunt and little baby cousin came to have a visit. The baby was only about two years old, if I recall correctly. So my mom and aunt went to town shopping for a few hours, and I stayed home and babysat the baby because he wasn't feeling good and just wanted to nap. So I had been sitting there watching TV for probably 20 minutes or so, and then I thought I heard a noise at the back door. We just used the back door to get in and out of the house. We didn't use the front door. It was just pretty much for decoration. So I sat there listening for a second, and again, I heard another noise at the back door. So I got up to go and check. I opened the door and couldn't see anything. So I went out onto the deck and leaned out and looked to see if I could see someone coming up the driveway, and nope, there was nobody there. I turned to go back into the house, and that's when I realized that somehow the door locked behind me. I huffed and puffed and tried to figure out what the heck I was going to do. I tried to open the windows that I had access to from the deck, and sure enough, they were all locked. So I turned to go down the stairs to go try the front door when I saw the cutest little puppy just standing there looking at me from the wood line. I tried to get it to come to me, but it just turned and ran back into the woods. So I thought, huh, that's weird. So I went around to the front of the house to see if the front door was open. Nope, sure enough, it was locked. So I started making my way back to the back door again when I saw the puppy looking at me from the wood line. Well, this was just too cute for a 13-year-old girl. So I went running after it. And in my mind, I was thinking, Lassie, this dog wants me to follow it because it wants me to help it in some way. I know, it's silly, but once again, I was a 13-year-old girl, and that's how we think. I followed after it for a couple of minutes, and then I saw it run underneath a thicket. I thought to myself, well, there's no way I'm going under there. So I turned to head back home, and my eyes rested on a great big black shape about 15 feet up a tree. 
It honestly looked like a great big bear curled up in a ball, sleeping on a branch. And then, all of a sudden, it stood straight up. Even at 13 years old, I knew right away it was a Bigfoot. Living in the West, you do hear about these things periodically. But I will admit, I was already fascinated with Bigfoot, probably since I was six or seven years old. But looking at this thing, I realized there was no way that this was the kind of Bigfoot that I wanted to see. It was covered in filthy, dirty hair, It had leaves and burrs stuck to its hair. And even though I was quite a distance from it, I could still smell it. And it was really putrid. Somehow, I knew that the way it was looking at me was not pleasant. I knew that if I didn't run, I was going to be seriously hurt. All of a sudden, I screamed at myself to run. And I started running. And I believe that's when I felt it hit the ground. I not only heard it hit the ground, but I actually felt the ground shake. And I heard the footsteps as it was running after me. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me that the door was locked. And how I came up with the idea, I don't know. But I ran to the side of the deck and I yanked a piece of trellis that's used to decorate around the deck. And I slid underneath so fast, and then I pulled the trellis back into its place. I sat there hugging my knees and holding my breath and praying to God that it didn't see me go under there. Then, maybe 30 seconds later, I could see it through the little holes in the trellis as it came around the side of the house. It was furious. It looked into my mother's bedroom window And then it looked into my bedroom window, where my little cousin was sleeping. Then it came to the deck, and it stood there and started sniffing really loudly. It sounded like it had a big wad of phlegm caught in its throat, while at the same time it growled. It was furious that it couldn't find me. But all of a sudden, it felt as if it knew I was in the vicinity. It could smell me but it couldn't quite figure out where I was. I watched it take a couple of very quiet steps, and then it came to the stairs of the deck. It hesitated, but it stepped closer to the house, and I could tell that it was looking in the dining room window. And that's when I thought I heard my cousin call out my name, and I prayed to God, please don't open the back door. There were four steps leading up to the deck. It skipped the first step and stepped on the second one. Then it skipped the third and stepped on the fourth. Now it was on the deck. All of a sudden, I remembered the conversation my aunt had with my mom. She said, you've got to get that deck fixed before somebody goes through it. It really was in bad shape and there was pieces of wood missing here and there. I was still holding my breath because it was almost right over top of me. And that's when I realized that the piece of wood that was just about a foot from my head was missing. I slowly moved my head so that I could look up. And that's when I realized I shouldn't have looked up. There it was looking down at me through the missing piece of wood. There was not a doubt in my mind. It hated me. It stared at me like it wanted to kill me in the worst possible way. And the whole time I kept thinking, I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. I was imagining that he was going to reach down through the hole in the floor and grab me. So I leaned over so I didn't have to look at his face anymore. And that's about the time I heard my aunt's SUV coming up the driveway. I think the Bigfoot heard it as well. I looked towards the driveway, and I saw the nose of her white Lexus pull up right beside the deck. And then I heard the thump, thump, as the Bigfoot ran and literally jumped over the side of the deck. Somehow, it lost its footing, and I watched its arms swing like a windmill, and he fell forward onto his knees. 
Then, all of a sudden, it screamed so loud, it jumped to its feet, and in seconds, it was across the lawn and in the woods. I heard my mom and aunt screaming, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? I pushed out the trellis and jumped up and screamed at my mom to come and open the door. I could see the look on both of their faces and I knew that they were just as afraid as I was. I seen my mother lean forward and open the glove box and she pulled out my aunt's weapon and gave it to my aunt. Then they both came running to me and we got inside. And believe it or not, after all of that, here was my little two-year-old cousin sitting in front of the TV eating potato chips that I had been eating earlier. All the yelling and screaming and carrying on, and he wasn't at all fazed by it. I started to cry, and I told my aunt that I had heard him call my name. I said he could have opened that door at any given time, but he knew enough to go and sit and watch TV. My aunt ran to her little boy and picked him up and said, Come on, we got to get these kids out of here. So that day we packed up everything that we would need for a couple of days and we went and stayed with my mom's sister. My mom ended up putting the house up for sale and we ended up getting an apartment for a year until we could find something that was a little bit more affordable, which we did end up finding. So that's my story and I'm sure you can understand why I'm curious how I could have such a terrible experience but people like Miss Julie could have such wonderful, peaceful experiences. I'm pretty sure that if my mom and my aunt hadn't pulled in when they did, that I probably wouldn't be here today. I could almost guarantee I wouldn't be. So that's my story. If you can use it, that would be wonderful. But I would greatly appreciate it if you could give me advice. What did I do to make it so mad at me? Oh, and by the way, this all happened in 2005. And thank you, signed Alyssa.